So how do you celebrate 60 years of Lamborghini? Well, you take the ultimate expressions of the best-selling Lamborghinis of all time into the hills above Sant'Agata Bolognese, the home of Lamborghini. And even in the hills of Italy, they make way for these beautiful machines. The camera phones come out and people give you a really wide berth. We're actually in the Modena Hills, not far from Maranello, the home of Ferrari. So we're really rubbing it in. This is going to be a lot of fun. alive to the sound of the Akrapovich exhaust in my Lamborghini Urus Performance. Now we all know the history of Lamborghini. It all started when Ferruccio Lamborghini, a very wealthy Italian industrialist and maker of tractors who owned a bunch of Ferraris, went to Enzo Ferrari and said, look, you can do a better job with the clutch of your sports cars. Il Comandatore was not that impressed. So he told Ferruccio Lamborghini that he could put his opinion where the sun don't shine. Well, Ferruccio Lamborghini decided he was going to show Enzo Ferrari a thing or two and created the biggest rival to Ferrari. In doing so, he created some epic sports cars. The Miura. When it was launched in the mid 60s, was the first mid-engined supercar and the shape of things to come. Enzo Ferrari himself had to switch to mid-engine supercars to compete. When the Countach was launched, in the mid 70s, designed famously by Marcello Gandini. That famous wedge shape went on to shape supercars ever since, even until today. In the mid 70s, because of the fuel crisis, the company went through a tough time and Ferruccio Lamborghini had to sell out. The company then went from owner to owner and had a tough couple of decades until Audi of the Volkswagen Group rescued Lamborghini in the late 90s and instilled a little bit of that German precision and quality. The important thing though is they retained the Italian soul. Of course Lamborghini had to go the SUV route with the Urus and boy has it been successful. Ferrari even with the Pura Sangue is creating their own version of an SUV. Rolls Royce with the Cullinan is producing an SUV. In fact Porsche as a company was rescued in the early 2000s because of the success of the Cayenne and that has what allowed them to continue making some of the best sports cars in the world. The incredible engine sound that you hear in the car that I'm driving is courtesy of the 4-liter twin-turbo V8 that produces 657 horsepower in the ultimate version of the Urus that I'm driving today to celebrate 60 years of Lamborghini. The 
Did I mention that they've retained the soul of Lamborghini and they've managed to do that even in a car the size and shape of the Urus? Of course you feel the weight of the Urus when you hit the brakes, but when you're accelerating, Jesus Christ, it goes like stick. And of course, there's a little bit of turbo lag from those twin turbos, but boy, when the boost kicks in, it just takes off. The power is stupendous. You feel like you're propelled by an otherworldly force. So, if you want to enjoy all the crazy supercar madness of Lamborghini, and you want to do it with a family dog, this is the car for you. It's really nice that we're driving the Huracan Technica, which is the ultimate version of the Huracan Super Sports car, which is in front of me right now, and the Urus side by side. Because you really get a sense that what Lamborghini has tried to do is instill a little bit of that rawness that is in their super sports cars in an SUV like the Urus. While in a Huracan Super Sports car, they've tried to instill a little bit of refinement so that you can use it every day. It's a beautiful contrast. <laughs> it should be illegal for a car this big to accelerate this fast. Oh my god. And on the overrun, when you leave the exhaust, you hear this crackle and pop from the Akrapovich exhaust behind me. It's pretty magical. Of course, the next generation of the Urus will be hybridized, electrified, and it will get even heavier and even more complex. So, while you can, you just gotta revel in the pure, sheer, brute force of this 4-liter twin-turbo V8. It is just magical. The Urus is no slouch when going around corners either. So, if it's an everyday supercar that you're after, then all I can say is 60 years from the invention of this brand, Jesus Christ, does that raw emotion still hold true even in a package as usable and practical as the Urus. <laughs> Of course, keeping me on the road is just a massive, massive tire footprint. The rear wheels are 23 inches, 23 inches. And the brakes are just massive dinner plate sized carbon ceramics. So what you're hearing every time I hit the brakes is the carbon ceramics complaining just that little bit. They complain audibly, but when you hit the brakes, it is just instant, it's immediate deceleration, and it's absolutely fantastic. So they work really well. A little bit noisy. How can you not giggle when driving these cars? I have the Huracan Technica in front of me, and he just dropped gears, floored the gas, and took off, and all I could see was the heat haze above the engine as it gave him full power in front of me. Lamborghini has sold 150 Huracans in all the time it's been on sale in India. And they've already sold two, over 200 Uruses since it's been on sale for a short time in the country. And the great thing about you Lamborghini owners is that you drive your cars. And this is how they're meant to be driven. These roads on these hills is where all the Italian supercars ever have been developed. So, what better place and what better road on which to celebrate 60 years of one of the most legendary supercar makers of all time. This is Italy's Moda Valley, which has spawned the likes of Ferrari, Lamborghini, Ducati, and every other evocative name that you care to mention. The other incredible thing about following uh, Huracan Technica at such close quarters when it's going pedal to the metal is that I can see the butterfly valves of the exhaust open and close.
sound of naturally aspirated V10, heat haze, butterfly valves, merged with the sound of 4 liter twin turbo V8 and Akrapovich exhaust. Beautiful blue skies, incredible roads, and Tuscan hills. What more can you ask for in life? Well, one thing I gotta tell you, I'm having no trouble at all in this Urus Performante, keeping up with the two Huracan Technicas in front of me. Performance is just not a problem. But now, I'm gonna jump in in something that is a little less practical and potentially a lot more fun. One, 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 one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. Yeah, I was building on the lecture. Versus coming daily under pressure. You join me now in the Huracan Technica, the ultimate expression of development of the Huracan. I absolutely loved driving the Urus Performante and I was completely blown away. I had no idea that an Urus could capture the soul of Lamborghini so perfectly, but this is the real deal. This is the ultimate expression of the Huracan Super Sports Car. It's been on the road since 2014, nine years, almost a decade of evolution, and this is the ultimate road-going Huracan. One of the nicest cars that I've driven in a very long time. A couple of years ago, I drove the Huracan STO, which was their racetrack focused Huracan. I drove it at the BSC only for a few laps, but I absolutely loved it. I loved it because it was absolutely raw. It was a Huracan that you could push to the absolute limit. You could get it to the limit, you could get it sideways at corner exit, you could use all the power, and it just felt raw usable, aggressive, and everything that you want in a super sports car. The Huracan has evolved over 10 years, the internal combustion engine over a century, and this is peak evolution. Similarly, human beings have evolved for 300,000 years, and you could say, in one sense, we've reached peak evolution not purely in a Darwinian sense, but because we have the ability at the palm of our hand, thanks to a smartphone, to have all the knowledge known to the human race literally in the palm of our hands. But how do we use that knowledge? We use it to doom scroll through TikTok. Similarly, what happens to the evolution of the automobile as we go forward? Well, likely, it gets a little more complex. The next generation of the Huracan will be electrified. Future supercars will most likely swap out this roaring, beating V10 heart for an electric motor of some kind. Advanced, I'm sure, fast, undoubtedly, but still that little bit soulless. So is this peak evolution as we know it? Well, the only thing I can say is, if it is, all you can do, if you can afford it, is get yourself a Huracan here and now. This, ladies and gentlemen, is your last chance. The Technica is already sold out, but however you do it, get yourself one of these because this is truly, genuinely, the absolute peak of evolution of the automobile. A hundred years of development, here we are, and boy, is it something else. Oh, just listen to that howl. The great thing about this car, is that it's rear wheel drive which means the steering is completely uncorrupted there is no four wheel drive 
one of the fastest cars I drove recently was the Ferrari 296 at the BIC and it was stupendously fast but it's hybridized it's a little bit heavy it's a little bit vague even it's ridiculously fast don't get me wrong but for purity of experience my god you cannot beat this revs all the way to its eight and a half thousand red line Jesus what what a machine Whoa. all the traction control lights are flashing in front of me it feels alive it feels lit and raw how this car is meant to be driven it just you can feel it every inch of the way every inch of slip from the rear it just gets absolutely magnified through the seat of your pants thank you Lamborghini thank you for creating a machine like this and thank you for inviting me to the hills of Italy to beat the living daylights out of it and drive it the way it's meant to be driven Yash from Ahmedabad has just taken delivery of his Huracan Technica. Yash, you're a very lucky boy. You're a very lucky boy. The roads are a little bit broken, but this car, because it gives you so much information, it communicates with you, it feels small and lit, and you feel like an integral component of this car. It just lets you feel like you can handle absolutely anything. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what driving a supercar is all about. Children wave, giggle, jump. You not only put a smile on my face, but you put a smile on the face of everybody who you drive past. This is why supercars exist. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not only the ultimate expression of the Huracan, it could very well be the ultimate expression of the automobile.